This video will cover the DMT dual mode tracker in both TV and laser spot modes, the nav flare and night vision goggles for both day and night operations. I will not include the T-pod or targeting pod, this is because it is still too much in early access, I will cover it in a future video when features have been added. In the nose of the aircraft we have the DMT dual mode tracker, this is the primary sensor on the Harrier. It is fixed to a 6x magnification and can be slewed with the TDC forward, aft, left and right. At the time of recording TDC slewing axes are not supported so do not bind them. It can be enabled by one of two ways, by pressing the on screen button on the MPCD or the easiest way is to choose sensor select switch aft and this will cycle between the two modes of the DMT, this being laser spot track and TV mode. In TV mode the camera is slaved to the velocity vector on your HUD. So if I point it down, you will now see where I'm travelling. If I wish to designate a target, I press the TDC action button. So I'll put myself over something interesting. I'll take this airfield. I'll press TDC action. And it will lock a point in front of me. If you wish to undesignate, you press the nose wheel steering button. So, action to designate, nose wheel to undesignate. Something important to note, if I designate an object, I'll slew over, it is best that you track the bottom of an object you wish to follow. If you put it at the top, you will notice that the camera is in fact not tracking the building itself, but tracking the ground behind the building. This is because the dual mode tracker does not have the ability to follow points, it merely follows the ground. So the best method for keeping your target in your sights is to always aim at the very bottom of your object. That way you will ensure the minimum amount of drifting. Note that the DMT cannot track moving objects. So I'll press TDC on designate. The DMT has a number of modes. We have options here for night, this turns off the video to prevent you from blinding yourself when using night vision goggles. INS and POS, non-functional, I believe it's related to setting the INS or waypoints into this camera, however, like I said, not functional. The FLIR, the FLIR or as it's labelled in the manual, the filter, will change between low light and daylight conditions. The sensor does not work at night and you will struggle to capture anything with it. The second mode of the DMT is the laser spot track mode. You can enable it by pressing the sensor select switch aft to toggle yourself to laser spot track. You can see here your laser code. If you wish to change your laser code you nearly, merely need to enable this button here. When you do, you type in the new laser code and press enter. I shall reset that back to 1688 which is the default. Next, if you wish to use this, you need to have a JTAC or player lasing for you. In this case, I have a JTAC and ask them to turn the laser on. As you can see, we have a new crosshair on the HUD. This indicates where the camera is currently looking for its laser mark. I'm going to point my nose to where I know the laser mark is. So it's just up here by the cross. If you watch the reticule on the HUD, there you go, it's found the, ta the target, it's now created a designated point for itself, and it will track this location. Bear in mind that this will not track a moving object, it merely tracks the first point at which it locates the laser. If you wish to find a laser spot again, simply undesignate your target, and cycle the sensor select switch off and back on. Point your nose back at the target, and it will reacquire. You will need to do this between attacks, otherwise you will find you are tracking your previous laser mark. Like I said, it is not an active track, it merely tracks the first point it discovers it. Finally, you can change the search area from wide to narrow to HUD. I recommend you leave it on wide. This is essentially just the area in which the laser, is search the laser spot tracker is searching for the laser. If you wish to use it at night, the camera footage will be more or less useless, however it will still spot the laser. In that situation you may prefer to have night mode enabled. This will turn the camera off and allow you to use NVGs without being blinded by it. 
So let's put the night attack part of the Harrier into practice. The first problem you're probably going to come across is it's really dark in this cockpit. Something that a lot of people don't realise is there's actually a flashlight. If you press left alt L, it will enable a flashlight on your cursor. This will allow you to navigate your cockpit and find all your switches without issue. In addition to the flashlight, inside the cockpit you have the helmet mounted device. It starts off as a sun visor, which is not terribly useful at night. However, you can also change it out for NVGs via the radio menu. So I'll tell the ground crew, change helmet mounted device, request NVGs. Copy. Wait for them to install it. NVG and now I can enable NVGs. You can switch them on and off by default by pressing left shift N. As far as I'm aware there is no, no way currently to change the brightness, so you're stuck with what you have. The cockpit is optimized for night vision. As you can see, I can see all my MMFTs without too much difficulty. And if I switch off the primary lights, you can also see the HUD nice and clearly. If you are flying a long mission and are intending to use both the sun visor and the NVGs, this is possible by selecting the aircraft you intend to fly, going to the hangar setting and ensuring that the AN AVS9 NVG case is loaded on cockpit. By default there is no key binding so you need to set your own one. Then once you've pressed the binding you will have to wait about 4 minutes and you must not perform any difficult manoeuvres so maintain level flight or a gentle turn after which you will have your helmet mounted device swapped over. So it's night time, I'm attempting to use the DMT and as you can see the camera can see almost nothing. There's a little bit of detail in there but not enough to be useful. So during the night I find it best to simply use the nav flare to locate your target, then drop a TDC action on the location and then visually engage using that marker as a reference to find your target. Next is laser spot track at night. So I've got laser spot at night, I'm going to turn on the laser sensor. I'll enable night mode on the TV. And now I'll bring my marker across the target area. And we should hopefully find it. There we go, so our laser has now acquired the spot. Remember if you do not wish to have the TV turn on, and using the laser spot track at night, enable the night function on the OSB. So now we've got the laser spot designated by a laser, and we can engage. Next is the nav flare. This is a very powerful sensor, it is the forward looking infrared designed for navigation and target acquisition. It is mounted on a fixed position on just above the nose, it can be shown on the MFDs by sensor select switch right. It is at a fixed position so you cannot slow it around. You can also put it on your HUD, however it requires a little bit of setup. First step to that, you need to select the HUD mode to night. Now you need to press the sensor select HUD reject slash down and it will appear on the HUD. As you can see, I can now see more or less plain as day. There's the target area. If you wish to change between black hot and white hot, you simply press sensor select switch right. Be aware that because of a limitation in DCS at the present, the sea is always hot, and so are trees and buildings. But you can see on the cross there the targets, the vehicles. We'll have to wait for an update, hopefully in 2.5 when nav flare and flares in general will be massively improved. In the meantime, we can use this in entirely in place of night vision goggles if you so choose to. You can use this in conjunction with any weapon you fancy, that includes the HUD, CCIP modes, guns, anything else that you can look through to see it. We've got the master on, here we go. Pickle. 
The Navflir also supports a hotspot detector which puts a small V marker above any potential hotspots that could contain targets. This has not been implemented in early access however. So with that, happy hunting!